How's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be the first episode of a new playlist for the channel called Tools and Stuff. And today what we're going to talk about is taking this, which is an old power supply out of a computer, and turning it into this, which is a usable, uh, I don't want to say it's a benchtop power supply, but this is a power supply dedicated to one thing and one thing only, and that will be for use when I get my tire razor in place. It's going to be mounted on bench work, and uh, it'll be a portable, rollable unit. And it's going to contain the power supply used for it, as well as for braking in motors, things like that. I have the uh, lathe attachment on order coming in for it. So all this is to support the tire razor. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this thing first. Um, first things first, this is not a finished product. I just threw some uh, contact paper over the top of it because this wood is pretty ugly. It's just scrap MDF I used to make this enclosure. I still need to get everything painted and make it look pretty. I also need to add my fuse holders when they come in. There'll be four fuse holders added into this. I highly recommend those. Uh, they just haven't arrived yet, so I've got room to put them in, and I'll drop those in as we go and uh, get this thing finished out when the rest of my parts come in. But it's pretty simple. Uh, you simply just got a power on off button and you got the blue indicator, which is not driven directly from the switch. It actually comes from a lead on the power supply itself that says the power is good. Everything's working as it should. So that's a positive indication that everything's correct. And this is a separate regulator that I've purchased. And this will allow me to control the voltage on these two uh, right here, these two terminals. Uh, this being, uh, I can vary this down from zero to about 10.2 volts right here. And of course the yellow is my positive and the black is my negative. Uh, these here are strictly 12 volt output. These are strictly five volt output. And these are strictly 3.3 volt output. And what do I use these for? Well, like I said, for the tire razor application, this will drive the tire razor itself. This, I'm going to automate the tire razor. It's gonna have a motor on it that's gonna move the sanding platform back and forth automatically. That'll be driven off uh, straight 12 volts. So I, don't, I can adjust my voltage accordingly and the speed of the sanding platform will remain consistent no matter what I have the uh, output voltage here set to. The 3.3 volts uh, is really good for breaking in a new motor. Uh, you can just plug it in to the 3.3 volt side, oil the motor up really good, let it run for uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. And uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and you can move it over and put it on 5 volts for a few minutes after that. And what that's going to do, when they talk about breaking in a motor, what, they, what we're doing is we're actually seeding the brushes to... Uh, sort of take the shape of the commutator. The commutator is round, the brushes are flat, and as they wear, they'll uh, start wearing in and the face will start to match that of the commutator. And of course, we're not trying to do that to get a 100% complete contact patch, but we're just trying to enlarge the contact patch a little bit without using higher voltages like we would use on the track that generate a lot of arcing when things are not uh, seated properly. So a gentle break into the motor does wonders for the life of it and uh, makes it just run better out of the box all the way around. And I do tend to break in my motors when I get them. Um, I've been using a different type of power supply to do that and now I can just use this uh, on the tire razor and I don't have to tie up any of my other power supplies. So uh, let's take a look at a power supply as it comes out of a computer and see what it is we're going to have to do first. Okay, what we have here is uh, I've got several old PCs laying around the house and I cannibalize them for parts as I need. And um, I started grabbing power supplies out of them and uh, they're actually very useful for a lot of different things. Some of the key things you want to look at on your power supply, uh, most of them that you're going to come across are going to be the ATX style power supply. And uh, this actually came out of an old uh, 486 and or slash Pentium machine. 
Uh, I'm not sure which one it was in, but uh, it was quite an old computer running XP. So it's uh, nothing new here at all. And this here is a 200 watt power supply, so it's not a monster, but it's good for smaller uh, power supply applications. You can get 500, 600 watt power supplies on uh, online all day long for, you know, 50 or 60 dollars. So they're not overly expensive. But what we need to do with them can be a little unique at times. Now that being said, one of the first things I would recommend you do is I don't know how well you can see it here, but uh, if we look at the model number. Go ahead and Google your model number and see if you can get the pinout for it. That'll be the pinout for the connector that connects to the uh, main motherboard itself. And that'll tell you a lot of what you need to know about the power supply in itself, especially what these colored wires are for. Um, I know we've got an awful lot of wires it looks like here. It looks like a complete rat's nest. Don't get too hung up on that. We're only going to use a few out of these wires for a general power supply like this. I'm not building a lab quality uh, bench uh, like a lab supply. I'm building a power supply to run something and the current draw that I'm going to need is very minimal. Uh, maybe two amps max. And uh, this thing's capable of supplying quite a bit of uh, amperage as well as this one. And we don't need it for what we're doing. So uh, Let's see what we have here. Now, one thing they will note, looking again at the label, this here is a Dell. Now, uh, when I started this, I was thinking that, that I had a standard ATX power supply, power supply sitting around, and I don't. All I seem to have are Dells. And unfortunately, the Dell wiring colors are a little bit different. The functionality is the same. So I will post a schematic for a standard ATX power supply, uh, which works exactly the same except the wiring coloring. Chances are yours is going to be a, the standard ATX coloring, where the Dell coloring is a little bit different. However, the functionality again is the same. So let's talk about some of the wiring coloring that we have. Uh, you see we've got a million black wires in here, a million of them. These are all grounds. Doesn't matter which one you use, they're all grounds. Just make sure you use a wire that matches the size of the wire that you're mating it with. So we've got probably 15 black wires in here. They're all grounds. So that takes a lot of them out of the loop already. All of the yellow wires are 12 volt. That's what it outputs. All of the red wires are 5 volt. That's what it outputs. And if we look on the main connector on this Dell, we have a solid blue wire, and we're not going to use that. On this other connector here, there is three blue and white wires, blue wires with a white stripe, actually. These are your 3.3 volt lines, of course, and your grounds. Uh, we have a couple other miscellaneous wires we'll probably use. In this case, let's see if we can find it here. Ah, there we go. We have a gray wire, and the gray wire, when you connect that to ground through a switch, will actually power the unit on. That's how you turn it on with a switch. And we have an orange wire, and the orange wire is your power good signal, which would light your LED. Now, on a standard ATX power supply, most often, this uh, lead that you would switch to ground to turn it on would be green. And the wire here that would, is your power good signal would be gray. So you do need to go to your part number and make sure you have the right functionality of your wires based on their colors. Most of your ATXs will conform to the standard. This is unusual and Dell does not do that. We have one more wire here if you choose to use it. Let's see if I can find it here. There it is. And we have a purple wire here. And this purple will give you a standby light if you wish to have a standby light on your unit as well. Same thing, this goes to a resistor, through an LED, to ground. And that would give you your standby light whenever the system is plugged in and ready to be turned on. 
I don't use it. Uh, I don't need to know it's plugged into the wall. I really don't need to stand by. The power on that everything is good and functioning is good enough for me. So that's it. So let's take a look un under the hood of this thing and see what we get. Now, before we, I've already taken the screws out of this thing. Before you dive under the hood, I want you to be very wary of something. And if you just unplug this out of the wall, you want to let it set for a couple days. This is very important. I'll show you why. Why you need to leave it unplugged from the wall for a day or two before you start getting into it. Right here, we have two big capacitors right here. And these are both, on this one, they're rated at 200 volts. And these will actually store quite a sizable charge. And uh, actually, these are capable of storing a lethal charge. And they will make their presence known in a very painful way if you don't give them ample time to discharge. So, uh, as always, safety first. I highly recommend that if you're nervous about going into something like this or you don't know what you're doing, Find somebody who does. Uh, it's not worth injury or a life to make a power supply. Uh, this one here has been unplugged for about three weeks. So I'm pretty confident these are quite well discharged. But as you can tell, uh, I'm using a wooden brush handle to touch them. And I have no reason to go into this power supply other than to show you what's inside. And I want to make this point well known to be very careful. Your large capacitors, they can and will bite you Unplug it from the wall completely and let it sit on its own for two or three days before you pull it out of the computer and you should be safe at that point. Okay, I've taken the cover off this one here and uh, I'm going to kind of show you what I've done. This right here is a power resistor. Let me pull up the cover out of the old, of the other power supply here and I'll show you what I'm referring to. If we look, I don't know if you can see it or not. Doesn't look like it. If you look right here, I'll put a screenshot of this up on the screen so you can see it. You can see the outputs. And if we look at our positive five volts, it says uh, 22 amps. If we look at uh, 12 volts, it's six amps. And if we look at the positive 3.3 volts, it's 18 amps. So this thing will output the maximum, water, uh, maximum amperage on the five volt side. That tells us where we need to add the load resistor. Some power supplies you're gonna run across are gonna have their maximum amperage on the 12 volt side, and they will require a different resistor. This power supply here also does the same thing, supplies its maximum amperage on the five volt side, so that's where I've connected the load resistor. The load resistor is very important, and uh, this is a switching type of power supply, and you need to have a load. And the load would normally be uh, supplied to this unit from the uh, CPU on the motherboard. In this case here, we don't have that, so we're, we're simulating that by adding a resistor. The power resistor you use is pretty important, and it needs to be a power resistor, not a quarter watt metal oxide resistor. Okay, it needs to be something large and robust, um, and they're not expensive. I think I paid seven dollars for two of them. And since this one is connected to the five volt side, I'm using a 10 ohm resistor. If I was connected to the 12 volt side, I'd use probably a 22 ohm resistor. Now let's talk about the wattage rating of the resistor. How much heat or how much power can it take, can it handle? On the 5 volt side, again, I would want a 10 ohm, 10 watt power resistor as a bare minimum. In this case, I'm using a 10 ohm, 50 watt power resistor, and this doesn't even register as being warm. You could probably get a 10 ohm, 10 watt ceramic, it's like a hard white brick resistor, and use that, but uh, they tend to get warm, and these uh, uh, metal encased resistors with the heat sinks just seem to do a great job. And at 50 watts, like I say, I have zero thermal issue. This doesn't even register as being warm, and the power supply, as you can see, functions just fine. 
So again, that's connected to one of the five volt leads and one of the ground leads. And again, this is not permanent, so I don't have any heat shrink on anything yet because all this is going to get disassembled and put into another enclosure. Okay, so that will allow the power supply to function. Next thing we do is we wire up the switch. And like I said before, I have a gray wire and a black wire right here. And these two, the switch just connects them together and that tells the power supply to turn on. The orange and the black wire, uh, this switch here has separate LEDs, both for the anode and cathode on the switch. And uh, this will illuminate the LED when the power good signal is uh, hits five volts and that will tell us that the power supply is functioning properly. That's all you need to do to turn on the power supply. Uh, at that point, I have this little item, which is the back side of my regulator. And again, I have one black and one yellow wire going into the in on the power supply. And I've added another yellow and black wire to the ter two terminals, which are the yellow and black for the uh, outputs. Very simple to wire this in. And uh, that just plugs right in. Okay, and that's all reconnected. And uh, let's go on and see if we can get a better shot of the inside and see exactly what we have here. Let's see if I can get a wood block or something to hold this thing up a little bit. There we go, maybe that'll help. Again, I've grabbed another one of the 12 volt wires and right here I have a yellow wire and a black wire, which is going to the two terminals for the 12 volt output. Here I have a red wire and another black wire. And these are going to the terminals for the five volt output. And back in here, I have a blue and white wire right here and a black wire, which are going to the terminals for the 3.3 volt output. And that's it. It's extremely simple to build these things, and it's not difficult at all. Uh, standard cautions you need to uh, pay attention to whenever you're working with anything electrical, of course. And uh, I've used the bracket here to anchor it in back. And all this excess wire that I have here, I temporarily have each wire taped off individually and then bundled together and then re-taped again to isolate it. And I have them just stuck up over here for now that's going to go away. When I get ready to permanently mount this, I will go back into the enclosure and I will remove all the extra wires at the circuit board level and get them clipped out of the circuit board side so I don't have any issues. And then I will also add fuse protection. And that is simply the wire will go from here to the fuse and then from the fuse to here on all my terminals and uh, that'll help prevent any shorts because we're going to be attaching banana leads in there and uh, that's going to uh, lead to the potential of shorting something out. So, I mean, we do something like this, you know, plug a banana lead in, plug a banana lead in, and if you're not careful, you can short those wires out. And I wanna make sure I've got a fuse to uh, prevent any issues in that regard. So, I'll add fuse holders and that's it, but other than that, the power supply, as you can see, works just fine. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll leave the cover off, and I'm very carefully gonna go ahead and just plug it back in. Before I do that, there you can see the back of the power supply. And I'll go ahead and just plug it back in very carefully. I don't wanna shock myself. And uh, we'll just turn it on. And you can see it just fires right up with no problem. And we'll do a quick check with the voltmeter and you can see what we have. I'll turn this on. That's my regulator. Let's see, hopefully you can see this. And if we come right here, yeah, 3.35 volts. Here, we're, well, let me put my ground over here so I can get my hand out of the way. Five volts, 11.98. And all the way over here, 6.96, close enough to seven. So um, that could be just an error in the meter. That battery might be getting a bit low. So other than that, it's extremely simple. The wire up took about 10 minutes and that's it. So if you have any old PCs laying around, 
go ahead and make yourself a power supply. They're easy uh, and there's no sense in throwing away a perfectly good PC uh, that's got parts that you can use and uh, even if not these are available online. Now what am I going to do with this power supply? This power supply here um, I actually have a use for it and it's going to be something completely different than this. I'm probably going to use this power supply to supply 3.3 volts for driving uh, my lighting on my layout. This right here, these three terminals right here will give me 8 amps that I can use to power all the lighting on the layout. That should be more than enough. So um, that's probably what this power supply is going to be delegated for. Uh, just something to power the LED structure and roadway lighting on the layout. But that's an adventure for another story and we'll get to that when the time comes. So, okay, we'll keep this episode fairly short and we'll wrap this up. And again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'll make sure I supply links to everything that I've used on this. Uh, the one thing I will say is I bought a package of these terminals and I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I'll, I'll give you the link anyway. There's better ones out there and you may want to go ahead and grab some better ones. These will work without problem. That's why I'm going to use them. But I just think they feel kind of cheap and just not, they don't feel good. So I guess that's a good way to put it. Um, if I get the opportunity, I may, head, I may go ahead and buy myself some other terminals to use here. These here just feel junky to me and uh, I'll probably pick up something else in the future to use on this. But that being said, it works great and uh, I've run a lot of uh, time through it, even broken a couple motors with it. Uh, no thermal issues whatsoever, seems to work fine. It's quiet, couldn't be happier with it. So again, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to hit me up. Make sure you hit that notification button. We're gonna have a lot of strange content coming your way. And uh, hopefully this is just the beginning of some of it. Like I said, I have the tire razor coming in. So that'll be a whole new series there. So, okay. I want to make sure everybody stays safe. Have a great night. And I hope everybody's had a wonderful weekend. And we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. <music>